Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's episode we are taking our fly-by-wire A320 back to the Caribbean for another approach into Princess Juliana. It's one of my favorite approaches and I think you guys will really enjoy the landing so stay tuned. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, as we get started here, this is going to be just like any other video that I do when it comes to these uh, IFR flights. I will make sure that pretty much everything that I do in order to program the aircraft to gather my information is at some point displayed on the screen. That way you guys can follow along. Um, now, I do have my SimBrief integration working, um, so we will be using the SimBrief integration in order to enter in our flight plan into the MCDU, but I will briefly display what we've got going on here. So let's take a look at SimBrief itself and see what we can get going here. So we want setting up these displays here for you guys. There we go. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got going on here. Um, you know, I actually like to use the edit flight plan. I think it's easier for you guys to see how I put everything in. So let's back up a page real quick. All right. So as with all of my videos with the IFR flights, I do want to make sure I show as much information as possible. That way you guys can follow along if you so decide. I'm still battling a little bit of a cold, guys. So unfortunately, if you hear any of those disgusting cold noises, I do apologize, but I'll do my best to keep them out of the video. All right, so coming up here, you can see that we are flying here on Delta Airlines flight number 1295 from Miami to Princess Juliana or out in the Caribbean. We are using the Fly-By-Wire A320 profile for SimBrief. Really easy to install. Make sure that you have uh, SimBrief open here. Then on another tab, open up your uh, Fly-By-Wire page and there'll be an option there to click the link and it will automatically import it for you. Reserve fuel, we want to make sure that the IFR is set to 45 minutes there or for set to 45 minutes for IFR flight plans. Climb profile, we can leave that just as the uh, default, but that's gonna be 250 knots up until 10,000 feet, then accelerating to 300 knots, and then Mach 0.78 thereabouts. Um, and then we have our departure runways, runway 08 right, coming in on runway 10 at Princess Juliana. Uh, that's pretty much uh, consistent. That's always going to be like that when you're coming in to uh, Princess Juliana. I don't think they ever come in from the other direction because that mountainside is so close. Um, I'm pretty positive on that one. All right, so continuing on down, we have our flight plan. We're coming off the Clayto 1 using Bitec as our transition point onto our flight route. Um, then jumping on to the uh, Yankee 290 airway, coming out at Slugo, um, jumping on to the Ulaba 1 star, and then on to our approach for runway 10. So, um, pretty short and simple. Now, what I do like to do here is I like to always use the generate flight. Oh, we're just going to hit yes. And then from here, I always like to use the uh, print preview PDF option makes it much easier to read all right there finally i don't know why that took so long it never takes that long to load let's expand that quite a bit so up here we have the same information miami over to princess julian in the caribbean we have our cost index of 70 our cruising altitude today of flight level 350 uh, these are all the big pieces of information you're going to need when loading up today uh, we have our total fuel on board we're using pounds so we got 24,474 pounds of fuel that's going to be on board today Coming down here, we have our flight route. There's our departure off runway 08 right using the Clayta 1 SID, standard instrument departure. And then coming on to the Ulaba 1 um, star into uh, Princess Juliana. And then obviously we have our total payload, 45.6 thousand pounds. That's going to be our key part here. However, the SimBrief integration is going to take care of all of that for us, which makes it nice. And then your detailed flight route if for any reason you need that. Um, a lot of things are very handy here. There's our transition point that we like to use coming off of the uh, Clayta 1. And then, for example, here, if we come down further, we can see what's got plotted. There's our Slugo transition onto the Ulaba 1. So we'll, be, we'll want that information when it comes time to complete our flight plan. All right. So easy stuff. Real easy. 
So the first thing that we want to do is get some electrical power onto the aircraft. And uh, then we'll get everything started up here. We've got a couple other surprises to show you guys. So we're going to hit uh, our overhead panel here. We've got battery one. There's battery two. Go ahead and use that external power when available. Fuel pumps will remain off for now until we are ready to start the APU and fueling of the aircraft is complete. Our air ADRs are IRS, one, two, and three. Evacuation order, you always wanna make sure that's set to captain as you're the only one flying right now. Nobody gets off our plane without our permission. That's just the way it works for me. <laughs> and uh, let's see here, GPS. We just wanna make sure that we have all clear. Uh, white for error or white for fault is what we're looking for. So we don't want any white lights. And stepping on down, we can do the fire test on the APU now. Everything's good there. We won't worry about the engine one, engine two. We're ready for engine start. Again, as previously stated, fuel pumps remain off. Verify electrical power, I believe, is above 25.5 volts, I believe, is our limit. Always want to make sure you're above that. External power, we've already checked. Gen one, gen two fault. That makes sense because the engines are currently off. Packs on in normal mode, normal operation. Anti-I systems all in auto or off at this time. Um, exterior lights, we want wing lights, nav and logo lights on for this moment, seatbelt signs come on, no smoking and no portable devices lights on as well as the emergency exit lights to the armed position. And that is it for the overhead panel for this moment. We're going to step on down to the fly pad, just give that screen a click, turns it on, and we're going to verify we have a few things set up before we get going. All right, so the first thing that uh, we're gonna take some interest in here is we're gonna come down to our settings cog. Going to Atsu AOC, and here, you do not have to put your SIM brief uh, pilot ID. It will auto resolve to the pilot ID. Whatever you log into SIM brief with, for example, mine is Overkill Productions. I type Overkill Productions here, and then it will auto resolve to the pilot ID. But you wanna make sure that's populated if you wanna use the SIM brief integration. Um, and then ADIS source, I use Pilot Edge, and then the Medar source, uh, typically actually I use Pilot Edge there as well. Um, but um, I also have a Shake Print um, Flight Echo on my desk, which gives me pretty much all the uh, weather information that I need, so I don't really have to go to many other sources here. Coming back over to our main menu, we want to hit From SimBrief. And sometimes it can take a second. There it is. There's our flight plan. We should get all the meet our information if it's available. Now it's not available today and the reason being is because I'm using Pilot Edge. Uh, that configuration that we saw previously. Pilot Edge is primarily US West Coast. So just keep that in mind. Um, so we could switch that to another source but I'm not really worried about it for today. I have all of our weather information available already. Okay, for example, right now we have our uh, speeds at 070 at 4 knots. Now it shows 250 at 41 knots. This is going to be up at cruise altitude, so keep that in mind. Okay, but you have a bunch of information here that's real fun to take a peek at. But that's all we needed for the current moment other than coming down to the clipboard. We're going to go to the fuel window, and here we need to enter in that total fuel on board that we needed. So referencing that flight plan that we talked about, let's take a look at that once again. And where we are interested was, there we go, this number here, 24,474 pounds. Now, by the way, you can also access that by coming here and going to OFP. As long as that same brief integration is, you have all that same information right here. There's that 24,474. So it's really up to you. I have the multiple monitors, so why not leverage those, right? And I set my fueling to instant. I hate waiting. I'm a very impatient person. Unfortunately, one of my fallbacks. And from this point, we'll bring the OFP back up, but the aircraft is now fueled, which means we can continue on with the rest of the MCDU uh, programming and then get the aircraft out of here. Okay, so before we move on to the MCDU, let's set up a few housekeeping things here. I wanna turn some lights up. FCP lights. Primary flight display, nav display, upper ECAM, lower ECAM, co-pilot side if you wish. Here are some people say that you save some FPS. I don't ever really notice the difference, so I don't bother worrying about that. 
altimeter to set the altimeter I'm just gonna press B on our keyboard here you see we're rocking three zero one five let's make sure that changed down here as well yes it did and we just check that you can notice that this is uh, in um, hectopascals if you're ever curious about whether or not they're on top of each other you just check your current altitude should be the same all right and let's uh, clear the MCDU here next thing we're going to do is step on down and take a look at our transponder I'll zoom in for you guys here there we go set our transponder code we're gonna simulate we got a code today of 4665 set our transponder into the auto position TCAS remains in standby for now make sure our engine master modes which is our both off engine mode is set to norm speed brakes are, are retracted and disarmed as well as flaps are retracted as well. Parking brake is set. And let's see here. Predictive wind shear is off. Weather radar is also off. We are now ready to continue with the MCDU programming. So let's get started with that now. Now I will say this. Uh, before you start the MCDU program, if you're fast at it, okay? Let's say you're not watching my slow tutorials. At least I'm trying to be slow. I actually get yelled at for talking too fast quite often. Um, but if you are very comfortable with the MCDU programming and you're someone who can zip through it rather quickly, I actually do recommend stepping upstairs at this point, turning our fuel pumps on. We already completed our fire test on the APU and starting that APU up. That way when you are done, um, program the MCDU, you're ready for engine start and pushback. So let's go ahead and start here and we're going to throw that beacon light on letting everyone know, hey, the aircraft's getting ready to start. Be careful. All right. So now, before we get going here, I'm going to show you guys real quickly how to set up the uh, mobile MCDU on your phone or iPad or whatever other device you want to use. This is really handy. So let's go ahead and bring up a file explorer. I believe it is this one. No, nope, this one. I probably have to select it again. There it is. There we go. We got it. All right. So there it is. And we're going to go into my gaming directory, Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is where I have all my add-ons. I use add-ons linker, uh, my add-ons, my applications. You know, we can actually start one of these. Let's start Sky Dolly and get some of those cool shots at takeoff and landing today. So we'll bring that up real quick. And then we're going to come back real quick and go to add-ons, aircraft. Now, if you're not using Sky Dolly or something like that, you're going to find your fly-by-wire folder in the community folder. Okay, I have it set to a custom directory. That way I can use the add-ons link to determine whether or not it um, actually installs. So now we're going to double click here. And we're going to find MCDU server. Open that up and launch the server. Now this needs to always be running. You cannot turn this off. But we're done with this window back here. So I'm going to close that. And then now I should be able to show you guys the new window. There it is. All right, so first thing it's going to ask here, it's asking if we want to connect to a real printer. I don't want to do that, so I'm hitting no. Hit enter. And then you can see here, we have our IP address up here. This is the IP address you need to go to from your cell phone. Now, here's the catch. If you're using a cell phone, a Kindle, something to that effect, you want to, or any kind of touch screen, whatever it may be, you know, one of those Chromebooks, whatever, you need to make sure it's on the same Wi-Fi or network as your computer. Now, a lot of people get really confused with this part, so I'm going to real briefly touch it. My physical computer, my big machine that is running the simulator, is hardwired to my router. Okay, it's got an Ethernet cable going from the router to the back of my computer. I want the fastest speed, right? Okay, every other device that I have in my house is using the Wi-Fi. Some people get confused thinking that in order to be on the same network, they have to have the same connection method. That's not the case. So I can still use my cell phone, even though my cell phone does not have a wired connection to my network. It's using Wi-Fi. I can still use my cell phone, and I'm going to go to this website. I'm going to browse out. And all I'm doing right now, as, as I'm telling you guys, okay, I don't have a great way to record my phone, so I'm not going to try that. But I am opening Chrome on my phone right now. I am typing in that IP address. I'm not worrying about the HTTP, and I do not care that you guys can see it. This is called a uh, local IP address. You can type that into your browser all you want. There are probably 40 million computers around the world that have that same IP address right now. Okay, so it doesn't matter. As long as you guys don't know, you don't want to give away your public IP. Your local IP, we don't care. I can change that number to whatever I want to change it to. 
Okay, so, anyway, because I know a lot of people get all security rigged out every time I post my IP address. You shouldn't show that. It doesn't matter. You're not going to find me by using that. Um, okay, so now I'm opening up my browser. I'm typing in 192.168.1.140 colon, that's important, this is the port number that it's using, 8125. And when I do that, I can now see on my cell phone right now, I can see a repeated window of the MCDU. So let's step on down to the MCDU and let's begin our programming. Now, you must leave this window open. You can minimize it like we're about to do here. Okay, so I just minimize it. I've hidden it, but it is still open and running. If you close it, you're going to lose the ability to do this. All right, so now let's begin programming our MCDU. All right, so moving to the MCDU here, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the initialization page. So in it, and this is instant, by the way. This is so fast. The connection is beautiful. I'm going to hit init request. The top right. There it goes. Uplink has begun. I'm going to hit the clear key. To clear those alerts down the bottom of the scratch pad. There we go. And now I'm going to go to MCDU menu. At SU. AOC menu. Weights and balances. I'm going to hit OFP request. There's all of our information. Now I also have boarding set to instant. So this is going to happen instantly. But watch all these payload numbers and, and passenger numbers. Boom. And the aircraft is now loaded. Now you can set this simulation rate. And I'll show you guys that in another video. But you can set the simulation rate on how quickly you want all of this stuff to happen. If you want to simulate real time boarding, you absolutely can. Uh, again, me, I like to just get moving. So, from here, we are now going to go back to the init page. I just want to make sure everything's set here. We can see from top right, moving our way down. KMI came, or <laughs> we're from Miami over to Princess Juliana. We're flying uh, Delta Airlines flight number 1295, cost index of 70 at a cruise altitude of 35,000 feet or 350. So, from here, let's move to our flight plan page. Now, the first thing we need to set up is our SID. When you use the sim reef integration, it is simulating the data link between company and aircraft. Okay, the company will determine how it wants you to fly from point A to point B. Okay, that's the route. It's important not to mistake a SID or star as part of the route. They're not. Okay, SIDs and stars are directed ways in and out of airport airspace. Okay, from there, after the SID or before the star is the root all that distance between okay do not combine them all as one thing they're not so the reason why it's important to mention that is that we can hope for whatever SID or star we want okay but in the real world there is one department that determines how we get in and out of their airspace and that's air traffic control so we're gonna simulate we have our clearance as we would contact for our Plata 1 departure. So we're going to be departing on runway 08 right. And we're going to scroll up until we find the Plata 1. You can use your up arrows to do this. And we are using the BITAC transition as we saw earlier on our flight plan. I pointed that out earlier in the video. And from here, just hit insert. And we're going to do the same thing with our destination. We're going to set up the star now. That was the SID, standard uh, instrument departure. Now we're going to set up our star, which is standard terminal arrival route. So selecting our destination, arrival, right, what we just talked about. Remember I told you you're always going to come in on runway 10. So RNAV 10 is what we've selected. The Ulibo 1 is our star. I think it's the only star into uh, Princess Juliana. And if you recall earlier, I talked about this as well, we we're using the Slugo transition. Or VIA, excuse me and there will not be any transition. We're not using a transition today. So you want to read a star. A SID, you're going to read from left to right. A star, you're going to read from right to left. Transition point, what is the waypoint that you will be joining the star from? Okay, we're not using one, we're flying direct onto it. Okay, then from the, actually, let me back that up. I might have those backwards. Excuse me one second. I want to make sure I'm not lying to you guys. So if we come here to our detailed flight route, we're going to scroll down. This is where we found it earlier. 
All right, so Slugo on to the Ulava one. So excuse me. Oh, so I'm right still. Well, this is actually kind of weird. I disregard what I just said. This actually makes it even more odd to read, truth be told. Um, because what we can see here is if we look here, we can see we're taking the Yankee 2 Niner, that's an airway, getting off the 290 at Slugo, from Slugo joining the Ulubo 1. Okay, and then from Ulubo 1 into St. Martin. Okay. Now, so that's kind of weird when you read it here on the um, arrival here. And I'm wondering. expand this a bit I'm really glad that I caught this and I hope you guys see this too um, so we're gonna back up because I need to fix this otherwise the aircraft can do some really goofy stuff on the approach so I'm gonna show you guys and this is why I told you guys to read it from right to left and if I hadn't done that I would not have caught this mistake so we're gonna go arrival the approach is the RNAV 10 okay the uh, Ulaba one is still our um, star, but we're not using a via onto the approach. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys here in a minute what I mean. So we're going to tell it no vias here. But the transition point is, in fact, the Slugo transition. So there. We are using the Slugo transition to get onto the Ulaba one and using the Ulubo one and flying direct on to the RNAV approach uh, for runway 10. Okay, Hit insert, and we should be able to verify all this now on our flight computer. So we're gonna come over here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you guys here, is we're going to switch this rotor here down to plan. Oop, there we go, doesn't really matter. There we go. All right. So we want to make sure this is set to plan. This, we're going to bounce that out a little bit because we're going to skip through a little. All right. And then you're just going to use these up air, up and down arrows to step through. Okay. Now the re I'm going to use the our mobile window here. That way you guys can get a nice, good view of it. There we go. All right. So now, I'm going to step through the flight plan. All right, now we have a flight plan discontinuity here. We'll talk about that next. Okay, but this is a break in the flight plan. When you see the green line break, if we look down at our MCDU, actually, guys, we'll just take care of it now. See this flight plan discontinuity? It means the aircraft doesn't know how to get from here to here. So all we're going to do in this particular situation is hit clear, and we're going to clear that discontinuity out and tell it basically you're just going to fly directly from this waypoint to this point, waypoint. We're not doing anything fancy. But sometimes you may see that if you're missing a waypoint. So you always want to double check. In this particular situation, we just clear the discontinuity and keep on moving. Let's keep stepping forward. And at the same token that we're doing this, we're also looking for any weird backtracks. We're looking for any waypoints that just don't make sense. But so here's what we got. There's Slugo right there. Stepping down onto the I, I, or excuse me, India 146. And then directly onto the approach with the missed approach down there. So let's see, what do we have here? Let's scoot this down. Now let's scoot down a little further. Let's come all the way down to 10. Boom. And so we're going to come right in here and join up with the approach from this hit point. Once we get here, let's back up. And this is the Ulaba is what that is. You got a couple right on top of each other, but Ulaba is what we're interested in. Uh, once we jump onto Ulaba or hit that waypoint, we'll activate the approach mode and turn the aircraft onto the localizer. So be nice and easy. But that is it for our flight plan configuration. So we are now ready to complete the rest of the MCDU program. Now, ironically enough, I actually didn't catch that we had another discontinuity there. So I'm going to step up one more time. I'm going to come here. We're going to clear that guy out as well. I'll come back up there. Yeah, that did clean up. Good. Always makes things easy. All right, but let's move on forward now. So from here, we're going to go back to the initialization page. We're going to hit the right arrow and go to init B. Select the zero fuel weight, zero fuel weight center of gravity line. 
you see auto populates in the scratch pad and then put it up on that same line and our block fuel I just like to pull it directly from the ECAM 24460 in this case we're gonna do 24.4 in the scratch pad and there we go for 24.4 thousand pounds probably could have done 24.5 if I would round up correctly and there we have all of our information now our fuel usage you can see in Annette B actually changes its name once you enter that in you can see it changed to initial fuel prediction all right so let's keep on moving forward we're gonna move on to performance now and from here on flaps we're gonna select flaps one so put that up there in the box Transition altitude, always 18,000 feet in the United States. Thrust reduction altitude, this is the altitude following takeoff at which the aircraft was slightly pitched down. Reduce its engine thrust to uh, climb power and um, begin to accelerate to climb speed. Uh, flex temp, this is a D-rated engine performance based on outside temperature. Uh, we're not going to worry about that today. I'm not going to worry uh, about using that, which means when you don't use that, we're just going to use toga. So at takeoff, instead of setting it to flex, we're going to put the, air, the throttles full forward into the uh, maximum power position. V1, this is the speed at which a aircraft can no longer safely stop a takeoff. So at this point, once, you reach, once we reach 141 knots, it doesn't matter if Santa Claus runs across the runway or Elvis springs back from the dead, bless his soul, and starts playing in your cockpit, you need to take off. Okay, VR, this is the speed at which we we'll begin pulling back on the flight stick and rotating the nose upward, also known as rotation. And then finally, V2. This is the speed at which the aircraft will continue to climb and accelerate, um, even in the event of a single engine failure in the, for the case of the A320, as it only has two engines. All right, perfect. So all that's populated into the uh, speed box there. Now, what we can also do, if you wish, is you can add the 10 knots onto the MCDU. A lot of people like to increase that to uh, by 10 knots. There's two ways to do this. We can either put it down here, as I've done here, change this to 156 knots, or you can put it in your speed box. Just make sure that at takeoff, you are in manual mode for speed control. Um, two ways to do it. I like to just put it down in the MCDU now. That way the FMS takes care of it. Now, reason being, the only reason that pilots do this and any company does this is it provides better performance on takeoff. That is literally it. There is no rhyme or reason. It is a company specific procedure. Some companies use plus 10 knots, some use plus five, others use plus 15 for the larger aircraft. And even sometimes I believe 20 and 25, depending on the situation. So uh, just keep that in mind that there isn't a lockdown solid number per the aircraft. It is a company choice. Okay. So let's do a quick review of everything we have going on now. Our MCDU configuration is now complete. We can switch this back to the flight plan menu as I like to leave it there. Um, we have our transponder code set. Our parking brake is still set. We can now lock the doors. The aircraft is boarded. The aircraft is fueled. If we step upstairs, all of our fuel pumps are now on. APU is on and ready and available. And we can verify that by stepping down and looking at our ECAM. You can see there, APU available, TCAS standby, parking brake still set, seatbelt signs are on, and no portable devices are on as well. Now, we do have some doors open, so we need to clear some of the exterior uh, equipment away from the aircraft so we can get ready and get out of here. The other thing that we're going to want to do is make sure we come up here, make sure your flight directors are on, set the uh, rotary back to arc or nav, whichever is your pre preference, set the distance at takeoff. I typically don't go much over 40 miles. Um, and then I'll increase that as we climb out further. And doing one last quick sweep to the cockpit, we are ready for engine start and pushback. So let's begin by clearing all of the exterior equipment away from the aircraft. All right, so we've cleared all of our external equipment here. The tug is pushing up to the aircraft here. Oh, we already did that, didn't we? I'm gonna take, take our engine master mode and switch it over into the start position. You can see the uh, lower ECAM switches over to the engine automatically. 
At this point, we're still just waiting on okay, sir. our target. Are set. You may lift. Parking brake set. Lifting the aircraft. Standing by for pushback. We're going to turn on our APU bleed at this point. This will bleed airflow over to the engines, allowing them to start. Released. Parking brakes are released. Commencing pushback. You can start the engines in sequence. Yeah, we'll start in the sequence. All right, pushback is beginning. We're going to start engine two. Notice our doors didn't close there. That's interesting. That's weird. Glad we got that. Should have checked my doors page before I switched on the engine mode. That was definitely my fault. Pilot error there. Turned it too soon. That's all right. It happens. All right. Engine two is at idle. Switching on to engine one. Now, admittedly, I did not do the engine fire tests. I almost never do. Being guilty. Not the safest way to operate, but we each. Dare life at our own risk, right? All right. It's close enough, I think. All right, let's stop the aircraft here. And we'll stop pushback. Okay, pushback completed. Please set your parking brake. Yes, sir. Parking, parking brake set. Brake set. All right, we're going to set our initial altitude. Initial climate altitude is going to be 12,000 feet. Auto brakes to max in the event of a rejected takeoff. TCAS can now go to TA. Predictive wind shear now comes on. Speed brakes, we can arm them now, or we can arm them before takeoff. To you. Flaps one for takeoff. Both engines now at idle. Flight directors on. Nav mode enabled. And we're good. Taxi light on. Runway turn off lights if required. Not at this time. Strobe light remains off until we reach the runway. Chime in the cabin. Flight attendants, please prepare for takeoff. And do a takeoff config check. And the only thing we need to do is arm the spoilers. 
We'll go ahead and do that now. All right, so at this point, let's taxi to our runway. Verify flight controls are all working. Throttle's responsive. Control stick working. Let's get her out of here. Parking brake released. Power forward, and we'll taxi up to Mike. Looks like we're getting a little bit of frame rate loss here. Really is hit and miss with me, man. Kind of curious, you guys should let me know. Did you get any major improvements from this most recent sim update? It was supposed to be strictly focused on repairs and bug fixes and performance increases. So I really haven't noticed much. Um, I'll admit, I guess I haven't had a single crash of desktop. It's got to count for something, right? Knock on wood. Hopefully everything goes well with our flight today. I guess time will tell, right? Let me know down in the comments how this recent update is treating you guys. Alright, so we have reached the threshold for runway 08 right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our... We're going to make sure everything is set here. Excuse me, not take anything. So once again... TCAS and TA until after takeoff. Transponder is on. Flaps are set for takeoff. Spoilers are armed. Max auto brake is set. Coming up top. Make sure the strobe light is in on or auto. Landing lights now come on. Runway turn off lights as required. Nose wheel light to takeoff. Alright, and we are ready to take the runway. So let's do. Alright, engines to approximately 50%, stable, toga. Nose down approximately 2 to 3 degrees. Wait till 80 knots. If there's 80 knots, release that downward pressure on the nose. There's V1. Come on, baby girl, come up. Pause the rate, tap the brakes, gear up. There's our climb indication here on the PFD, indicating we need to move the throttles back into the climb position. That's that thrust reduction altitude we talked about. You can also engage autopilot one. Turning on course. aircraft is approaching this S, this S indicates it is time to retract the flaps. It's just about there. Flaps up. And we are
are on our way. Approaching that 250 knot speed that we required below 10,000 feet. Once we reach that speed, the aircraft's ascent rate should dramatically increase. There's 250 knots, and you can see we're going up now over 1,000 feet per minute from where we were and continuing to increase that climb rate. So this is the point where the aircraft's going to climb like a bullet. So I'm going to catch you guys as we get... We're going to go all the way up to our cruise altitude. I don't feel like stepping through today. We're just going to get on up there. So we're designated for 35,000 feet today. All right. So now as we are approaching our 10,000 foot mark, there's a few things that we can do for housekeeping purposes. Now that the takeoff is complete, we can put our engine master mode back into the normal position as we will no longer be too concerned about engine start. We can also disarm the spoilers. Flaps are already verified as retracted. Stepping upstairs, you want to make sure your nose wheel light comes off after your gear is retracted. And we can also turn off the APU. So we can disable that and as well as remove the APU bleed. Okay. And then once we reach 10,000 feet, you want to make sure that your landing lights go to the off position and retract it. Which we should be there, so we should be okay there. Ah, missed it by a little bit. Overestimated a little. That's all right. All right. But other than that, we're going to continue our climb all the way up to 35,000 feet. At 18,000 feet, we'll need to make sure that we hit our barometer so we're going to hit the down arrow here do a left click and that will put us into the standard altimeter pressure of 29992 now the aircraft you can see has reduced its acceler or ascent rate dramatically that's because as we clear 10,000 feet we're now able to come up to about 300 knots it's looking like 290 knots is what it's aiming for once we get there again that climb rate will once again uh, dramatically increase and uh, we'll start powering out our TCAS, we can now switch that over into the TARA position, which is transmit and receive, basically meaning that it will the aircraft will also take action should another aircraft come too close. All right, my friends. Well, that is basically it until we get up to our cruise altitude. And even once we're up at cruise altitude, we'll be there for quite a while. Um, so I will catch you guys as we get closer to planning our descent. So I'll talk to you guys in a bit. All right, so as previously stated, go into our barometer. Hit that down arrow, standard position, and now continue our climb up to 35,000 feet. All right, hello everybody and welcome back. And uh, we have been in the air for quite a few hours now at this point, and we're coming close time to start talking about the top of descent. Now, the first thing I recommend you guys do is come in here to the progress page. Okay, so you click progress, you'll come here, and there'll be an empty box right here. Type in TNCM, you'll put that in the scratch pad, you'll click this LSK here, and it'll populate here and it tells you what the bearing and distance is to the uh whatever waypoint you put in here. You can put anything you want in there. But in our case, we want to know uh, St. Martin. So we're about 160 nautical miles away, and that's really important. So let's get into the next tool I want to show you guys, which is going to be our descent calculator. This thing makes a huge, huge difference. So give me just a second here. I got to find it. Do, 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 do. Nope, not that one. What about you? Is it you? I think it is you. Let's find out if it is you. Uh, <laughs> let me cancel that. Uh, where are you? There you go. Here we go. Perfect. All right. So let's throw that up on the screen here and boom. Do, 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 do. And let me move this around. Wow, that is like super zoomed in, huh? Super zoomed in. Mercy. Um, let me see if I can reduce that for you guys. There we go. Okay. All right. So a link to this tool will be down in the description below. It is extremely handy, extremely handy. Uh, give me a second. I need to pause the simulator or we're going to miss some stuff here. So coming in here, you simply enter in your, uh, current altitude so we're flying at 35,000 feet we're going all the way down to 10 feet um, again st. Martin that's right on the coast it doesn't get much sea level, much more sea level than that um, we're currently flying at 270 knots indicated 
we're going to be down to about i i normally guesstimate this if you will so about 140 knots on the approach speed give or take right winds if you want to really get down dirty with it you can enter in your average wind information for that you're going to have to go through a bunch of uh meter information and charts and yeah no I, I for simulation purposes i'm not going to dive that deep but you can if you'd like um if you're someone who enjoys that kind of agony three degree glide slope we need to descend at about a thousand feet per minute there it is that's what we're always looking for right and top of descent we'll be looking at about 123 nautical miles away and we should be looking at approximately 36 minutes uh to uh from top of uh or top of descent to landing so again a link to this website will be down in the description below i use this for pretty much every single aircraft that i fly anytime that i need to calculate my top of descent so it's super super handy now there's going to be a couple of checks here that we're going to have to watch for so i'm going to bring navigraph charts back up next so we can take a look at a few things there so let me let's see here boom that should be all that i need let's get rid of that guy and oh there's our charts good and we're going to come over here go to tncm and let me expand this for everybody i'm going to expand it for myself here there we go should be close enough all right so tncm we're going to be looking at the rnav approach so we're going to come down here this is where things get a bit critical remember this is an rnav approach so we're not going to have vertical guidance we need to make sure that we are descending the way we're supposed to and how we're going to do that is we're going to make sure at avaki that we are down to 2600 feet on a course of 095 degrees and stepping down accordingly all the way down to the apron here um and uh touchstone's elevation is 50 feet well actually well see we actually got a couple different things so tch that should be touchdown zone elevation but uh up here we have a runway at 12 feet so um not quite sure where the discrepancy in there comes in play maybe i'm misunderstanding something i think i'm definitely under misunderstanding something I just don't know where now if we have a missed approach we'll be climbing right turn to 4,000 feet um, and direct onto on bed. So uh, we have our missed approach instructions if those are necessary. Um, and then finally, we'll also have our uh, decision height, looking at 700 feet on the decision height, easily enough entered. And uh, we're going to be doing that in just a second. Now, on the Ulaba one, we also want to check the arrival here and see if we have any altitude restrictions that we're going to watch for. So there's Slugo. This is where we're coming in at. And let's see here. So from Slugo, we're going to be tracking heading of 160. It doesn't give me any kind of altitude restriction at these locations. So that's good. So I guess we're going to descend at our own uh, discretion. Well, actually, I don't know. Aguda here, we need to be at 2,600 feet. So from Slugo to here, to the Ulaba, we need to come down to 2,600. So we need to make sure that, uh, that we're watching that descent rate. Um, all right. So we'll monitor that as we come in. Not too bad. All right, so we got some more information that we need to enter into the MCDU at this point. So let's come on down. Resuming, that is our destination data. So we're going to hit clear here, and how we're going to do that is we're going to go to our performance page, move over to the next page. Oh, next phase, excuse me. Next phase again, and the approach. So we're going to need our altimeter information for um, TNCM. So I'm actually just going to Google. It's easiest for me. I'm typing in TNCM um, METAR. That's all I'm typing in. Nice and easy information. All right, so TNCM currently right now is looking at a QH of 1017. So let's get that in the box. 1017. Throw that up there. Temperature currently right now is 28 degrees Celsius. Nice, beautiful day. And winds currently are. Uh, zero five zero degrees at nine knots. So winds zero five zero at nine knots. Throw that in there. Transition altitude is sixty five hundred feet. Actually, I think it's six thousand. I thought. I don't think it's sixty five hundred. I thought it was six thousand. But we'll leave that there because the uh, MCDU auto populated that, so we'll trust it that it knows what it's doing. Okay, for our that. Um, our minimums, we're going to throw those in here. That was 700 feet that we found from the chart. And then here we can select our landing configuration. We are coming in at a full flaps configuration. So landing speed will be looking at 127 knots and approach speed at 132 knots uh, by full flap configuration. So nice and easy steps here.
Let's go back to our progress page, see where we're at. We know we need to be descending at about uh, 125 nautical miles. So what I'm going to do at this point is we're going to step up to the FCP. And we're going to start entering our descent information. So we're going to send this thing all the way down. I'm going to go all the way down to 1,000 feet. And I think we're good to go here. So we got that ready. So we got about 10 miles, give or take. And then uh, we're going to descend. So see you guys in just a few minutes. All right, so we have broken our barrier. There's 122 nautical miles away. Now, this is direct distance, but it still works enough for me. So we're just going to come over here, give it an up click, put the throttle into descent mode. The aircraft's going to slow down a bit, and then we will begin our descent down to sea level, basically. So uh, it's going to be pretty interesting from here. I'm going to go ahead and kick this down to about 40 nautical miles. Um, once we have... Um, St. Martin within 40 nautical miles. I'll come back with you guys and we'll start getting ready for our landing. All right, my friends. So we have passed through 18,000 feet here, coming down through 17,000. So we're going to tap that B key again and set our barometric pressure. But first we hit the, hit the up arrow. There we go. And you can see we are now in uh, current altimeter pressure of 3003. So we're going to continue our descent on down into St. Martin. Progress is looking at about 56 miles away so we are getting very very close um, I'm gonna monitor our speed for a little bit longer and then we're gonna start slowing this aircraft down here as we get a little bit lower and lower um, but uh, we still got a bit to go but um, it's definitely time to start thinking about some other action here so stay tuned and uh, we'll get ready for landing all right friends so we are now passing uh, or coming close to 10,000 feet As you can see the aircraft is now reducing speed to a target speed of 250 knots maintaining that 250 below 10,000 we're gonna step upstairs get ahead of the game a little bit get those landing lights turned back on ready for the approach here we're also gonna check our rad nav page and let's see here we are missing it oh disregard I forgot we're doing an R nav approach I was thinking we were doing ILS for some reason I don't know how that got in my head, so disregard that. <laughs> Keeps things nice and easy, I guess. So, at this point, then it's just a matter of continuing our descent in. So we'll just keep maintaining here, although I don't like this. That looks like a break. That's very weird. But uh, we'll continue that descent down, and looks like we're going to be right on point. I'll keep monitoring it for a minute here, but uh, I think we're going to be good. So I'll catch you guys in just a few here. All right, so it's time to start taking a bit more aggressive action here. So we're down to 8,000 feet. I'm going to put our speed in manual mode and start slowing the aircraft down to 180 knots. Um, and we may have to increase our rate of descent as well. We're just not descending quite as fast as I'd like us to be descending. here I'm also going to go into vertical speed mode send about 1800 2000 feet per minute give or take you can see now we're in vertical speed mode and down the aircraft goes I'm also going to deploy some speed brake to help the aircraft maintain its airspeed. All right, so I had to increase this to almost 3,000 feet per minute for a minute. <laughs> See what I did there? Now, the reason why this happened is my own fault. The descent rate from the computer got down to 400 feet per minute. That's not what we calculated. We calculated a minimum of 1,000 feet per minute. So I was not monitoring the computer's descent rate and making sure that it's in line with what we calculated. Now, we are getting close here, so I'm going to go ahead and resume that... About a thousand feet per minute now. And at this point, actually. 2,500. Yep. Yeah, we're going to lock it in at 2,000 feet. Because now we're going to be a little low. And that's okay. 
rather than try to climb back up. We're just going to hold 2,000 feet. And our speed is dramatically reducing now. We can reduce or retract the speed brakes. We're going to want auto brakes set to medium for this landing. And this is where things are about to get interesting. So here we are for landing. <coughs> that is so weird. I don't know why it broke like that. All right, we're going to turn directly on a vacuum. There we are. 2,000 feet, so slightly below where we need to be. But at this point now, speed is down where it needs to be, so flaps one coming down. And now it's where it's time to continue our descent down. So we're going to go down to 100 feet here. Set the aircraft in descent. 180 knots coming down to flaps 2. We have an altitude constraint at uh, Lesser for 1700, but this is perfect because it puts us right back on the, the glide pathway we need. So I'm going to go ahead and engage the approach mode at this point. Oh wait, there is no approach. I don't know why I am so hung up on an ILS approach today. I, I don't know why that keeps getting in my head. Clearly, I, I want to do an ILS approach here. All right, so let's check everything else. Landing gear is coming down. Cabin, let's give them a check. Take off light for the nose wheel. Flaps coming down. Speed. Reducing down to our approach speed of 131 one knots. Is that what it was? Let's go to our performance page for a second. We're going to go to next phase. Uh, yep, 132 knots. So there, we're right on the point. We're going to go back to our performance. We're going to hit activate the approach. And confirm activate approach. Alright, let's give that cabin another check. Flight attendants, please prepare for landing. There we go. Flaps coming down to full. Set our barometric pressure one more time just to make sure we're on point. At this point, we're just going to uh, walk the aircraft in. Watching our descent, making sure we're on point. One thousand. All right, looking beautiful. Now I'm going to try it. Oh, just continued our autopilot. 100 above. There you go. All right, let's see if I can do this, guys. Minimum. 500. Got too slow. Come left, baby. Come left, baby. Getting high now. 500. Real high now. Ah, come on. 400. It's all right. Come back to me, baby. We got this. 300. There we go. Let my controls get a little ahead 200. of me. Got a little behind the curve there for a minute. Let's 
Take out that fence line. Take that fence line. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard. Throttle's Drive. back. Ooh, nice. Reverses out. Auto brakes enabled. Excellent. All right, my friends, and that is how we do it. That is how we land at Princess Juliana. It's such a cool approach. It really is. Let's get those flaps up. Make sure the spoilers are now disarmed. Start the APU. Get it ready for uh, shutdown. And let's just use the turnaround here. Excellent. Well, folks, I truly hope you guys have enjoyed this flight. This is one of my favorite flights to take. I absolutely love doing this in the A320. It's just too much fun. Um, yes, thank you, A320. TCAS comes back to the TA. Our predictive wind shear can now be disabled. As we're getting ready to come off the runway. Landing lights will hold on to for another few seconds here until we actually clear the active here. But uh, this is such an awesome approach, guys. It's, it's the bigger the plane, I think the more challenging it is, the more fun it is. So this is definitely one of those ones I highly recommend in one of the larger aircraft, A32747, something to that effect. Uh, it's always, I think, the best part is seeing how close to that fence line you can get. I think that's the critical part. If you're going to fly it, you got to try to scrape your wheels across that fence line, man. Make sure you really knock those people right off the gates. Uh, <laughs> I think that's what makes it so exciting. All right, so we're going to cross the threshold here. Make sure we are fully clear of the runway at this point. And make sure that, uh, let's see here, TCAS now goes to the off or standby position. Coming up top, landing lights. Oh, come on. Are turned off. Make sure the nose wheel light is set to taxi and strobe lights are off or set to auto. I'd recommend off just to make sure. But other than that, we'll taxi up to the gate, shut the aircraft down, call it a day. So I appreciate everything that you guys do for me. Thanks for watching once again. And as always, stay safe and healthy. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, folks.